Time for another BTS vlog. Uh, yeah, we're doing our new uh, format, our all day long vlog, where we follow me throughout the day. It, well, not, well, sort of follow me throughout the day. Uh, I don't really go anywhere. I spend most of my time at the research desk, so there isn't much to follow. But what there is, is that uh, you get to see uh, what my day is like, and uh, I give you comments along the way as sort of how. Of how things are going or not going, or you know, how things have changed, and uh, as you can see, um, this is one thing that was sort of uh, starting, starting to become evident in uh, uh, vlogs a while ago. That my time when I start the day often shifts, uh, depending when I go to sleep and when I get up. Uh, so uh, I've already been had the start of my day. The day started around. 4.30, uh, yeah, 4, 4.30. It's now around, uh, uh, 5 o'clock, yeah. Well, no, no, it's, it's uh, <laughs> it's, uh, 5.40, and so this is the October 7th, uh, this is the October 7th, uh, BTS vlog. Uh, the weekend vlog is in the process of being, uh, uh, edited and then sent up. Uh, the editing is not going to be significant because I don't want to uh, have the BTS vlogs to be edited. I want them to be spontaneous. I want them to be open and honest. You know, in, in other words, uh, editing out my flubs, my mistakes, my errors is uh, not part of what BTS vlogs is all about. It's about the raw me and and, and about my improving. Uh, the vlogs. Can I improve on what I'm doing? Can I improve on uh, on my presentation? Can I improve on my speaking? Is there a problem with my speaking that I, that needs improvement? And if this can be done, then that's good. So that's where we're at with this. Uh, what's on deck for this week here is that uh, Mars Alpha, uh, sorry, sorry, Cyborg Alpha, the uh, portable uh, cyborg that's coming with me in my backpack that makes me more connected to the internet. Uh, is going to be in its second week of development. We're now sort of connecting all the different Androids together through a VPN uh, or a hotspot system so they can all communicate with each other and, and files can be transferred back and forth. Uh, development on the IDE has already started and this week um, we'll be going further into that uh, but we'll also be going into uh, the uh, the extension of the research desk onto Mars Elvis, so that I can take a lot of the research desk with me. And as I'm out different places, uh, like I'm going to my parents tonight in the, uh, 20 minutes, I'm going to my parents' house for dinner, and I bring it with me because there's always time in between to do different things. Uh, so I bring my uh, Mars Alpha with me, uh, Cyborg Alpha with me, and in other words, Cyborg Alpha is gonna, uh, the the Android system that's that is Cyborg Alpha is going to be with me continuously. It's always going to be there, uh, so I will always have access to uh, Cyborg Alpha. It's going to be part of my attachment, even though it's not surgically attached to me. It is going to be part of the accessories I bring around with me on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's where we're going this week to bring to bring this more into uh, fruition, bring it into more reality, and get it more functional. That's the goal here. So anyways, uh, that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to leave this here, and I will talk to you a little bit later, probably probably after dinner. All right, take it easy. Bye-bye. Invariably, as you turn the camera on, the light goes blink to, that tells you that the video is now recording. What ends up happening is that uh, you, no matter how well you prepare in your mind what you're going to say, you eventually forget things, and that's because as the video goes on, the mind goes blank. And this is the no exception here, and this is where a lot of vloggers, uh, when they have to vlog on a daily basis, really find a, a difficulty in continuing on after a, a period of time. And so what happens is you'll see a, a vlogger have a strong period, and then things will fall off, and there'll be a period where they're not where they're not they're not posting videos, and it is simply they've run out of materials, they've run out of things to say and really haven't uh, been able to sort of, they're kind of in a block where they can't get the videos out the way they got them out before. 
And this is, uh, I guess, this is sort of what's happening to nerds, uh, Cassandra at Nerds RL. She's very busy. She, I think she's on. Uh, uh, she's working on a show. I checked up on on Twitter. Uh, she is still around, but she hasn't been posting to her web her, to her channel. And for myself, uh, as a person who sort of sort of got started because of her, uh, this is something. So I, I'll sort of watch her channel with interest to see where she's going with it. And it's sort of interesting to see this. As for myself, uh, I just now had lunch. It's about 5.30 in the morning. And this is kind of uh, why I wanted to turn the camera on. Is that uh, when you're doing research and studying like this as your career, as your job, as I said before, it's like being in school for the rest of your life. But the thing is, is that it's a lot more interesting than you would necessarily think about it. Because uh, the only way... Uh, you're, the information isn't given to you by a teacher. You have to go out and find and piece together the information. And whatever you're going to study, whatever you're going to learn, all of it has to be, you have to go out and, and sort of collect and construct your own library. And that is actually kind of fascinating because at first when you start doing this, you start saying, oh yeah, it's not that hard. I'll go out and find out, you know, different books, different videos, you know, different resources that will build the library. And as you start reading through materials, you start reading through the uh, the books, you start reading through uh, uh, whatever materials you get, you, you watch the videos, take your notes, and what happens is that you always end up with, with information that doesn't seem to fit anywhere. And as you go off and start searching, you begin to realize, and this is sort of... Uh, this has sort of come true more and more this week, is you find that there are more and more hidden archives, more and more things that uh, were never publicized. In other words, when you went to school and you were taught history, what you're taught is so superficial that it's barely the reality of actually what actually, what, what actually occurred. In other words, if you went back and you actually saw the event for yourself, you would not recognize it from, the from what you've learned in the classroom. In other words, the reality is significantly different from what's being taught in school. What you, uh, and this is uh, of most schools. Most school kids learn uh, very little of what's actually going on. This is why history in school is actually so boring. And even the sciences are very boring in school. Because the amount of information that you're actually finding in, in the reality of that information is, you know, it's well, well, here it is, and there's nothing more to it, and blah, 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 blah. And the teacher goes on and on, and sort of, you know, and, and, and they sort of pride themselves with the ones that are so, quote unquote intellectual. Uh, pride themselves on being this sort of boring, monotone uh, know it all. But the problem is, is that when you actually get into the research, that you quickly begin to realize there isn't the know it all, that, that, that knowledge is infinite, uh, and, and, and you can't really memorize this stuff. And then beyond that, you start realizing that. Uh, History and even science uh, is put together differently than you, than what you learned in school. In other words, there is a fundamentally different approach to it, and this is certainly no different here. And this is why I say you know, five. I'm here at five five thirty in the morning, having lunch. Just finished having lunch, and I'm chasing down leads. And that means is that I'm working on a project, I'm working uh, to build a, a quantum physics lab, and I don't have a lot of money, so I have to build a lot of the equipment myself. That means I have to go into the history of how some of these equi the, the, the pieces of equipment were designed, and where labs I need, might want to look at in terms of constructing for myself. And I think if, invariably, because you're doing this, you're looking into the history of, of quantum mechanics and the history of the experimentation of quantum mechanics. And what I find that is the amount that I found that is not published properly or publicly known is enormous. As a matter of fact, I would say 80% of what I'm looking at now hasn't been published properly. In other words, it's not publicly known. This is stuff that is not appearing uh, on TV. This is stuff that's not appearing uh, when you're being taught in the textbooks about science. This is stuff that, that's completely hidden. It's completely unknown. Uh, not, not necessarily unknown in terms of uh, the, the, that nobody knows about, that only a certain select people know about this, and the people, select people who know about this want to keep this information hidden. In other words, this is where you start getting into classified information, this is where you start getting into hidden information, this is where you start getting into quote unquote these secret societies, and to a certain degree you start touching on these quote unquote conspiracy theories. 
uh, and many of the conspiracy theories are on the surface, if you start looking at them, they start to say, oh, well, that's a possibility, this might be true. But as you start going through the uh, conspiracy theories and see if there's anything there, and I've done this with the UFOs, you begin to realize that what happens is that the reality of what's actually going on, not the conspiracy itself, but the reality behind the conspiracy, is actually a lot more interesting than the conspiracy hit itself. And it's not, the conspiracy doesn't exist because it's simply a conspiracy and these guys are completely wacko. There is a hidden truth behind the conspiracy. But it's not the conspiracy itself. This is the thing. The conspiracy is not the hidden truth. There's other things behind there that are the hidden truth that have not been publicized and actually in many ways are the cause of the conspiracy. In other words, people are seeing these, these things, seeing bits and pieces of these hidden truths, not necessarily understanding what they're all about, and making connections that are not, are not necessarily there. And this is kind of where things get a little hairy, a little iffy, and uh, but it's also where things get exciting. And this is where library research, studying all day long, can get really exciting. And so here I am now, you know, it's at 5.30 in the morning, and I'm just having lunch. So it's uh, back to my research desk again, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, at the end of the day. It should be about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. All right. See you then. As you can see by the light behind me, yeah, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it's about quarter past 8. Uh, the many of the day today has been a rather long day. Uh, a lot of work has been done on Cyborg Alpha. The research desk is fully functional. Uh, I'm still rearranging my my notes from Friday and over the weekend so that I can push on through the rest of the week and see how I'm going to approach some of the searches that I need to do uh, for information uh, so, so, uh, on stuff like Tesla, on the development of quantum mechanics and quantum physics. And this will lead me into uh, the bench work that I'll be doing on the electronics bench uh, for the development of the uh, quantum physics labs. So in other words, all these things are interconnected. Uh, you can, this includes the history, the, uh, the um, uh, some of the mathematics, the, his, the the sciences, computer science, politics. All these things are kind of inter intertwined and interrelated uh, as uh, as as um, yeah. You know, that's my train of thought. It's late for me. Uh, there's a, there's a sort of an integration between or and in a relationship between these subjects that is not often seen or properly understood. Now, it is there. People do understand. Some people do understand it, but is hidden from the average person. And this is in many cases why you have to go out and, and do the work you need to do. You sit down and watch the documentaries. 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 You, you need to watch. And this is because you're looking at things not only from your own perspective, but you want to try to understand somebody else's perspective on uh, on it as well, particularly the people who are present, presenting it and why they think the way they think, what influence of what what influence their thoughts in that manner. And so this is where this kind of takes you, and it is a, a long process. As I, I finished one week, I've got a lot of sources to go through now, but I still do need to take notes. The notes come in a lot. Uh, it, 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 but they come in all jumbled because you're just taking notes as the information is coming in. Once, it, once that note is, the notes are done for that week, then you have to sit back and you have to organize it. And it could take up to a day. That's what's done today. It's taken a day to organize all the notes. And then tomorrow, starting Tuesday, well, tomorrow when I get up again in a few hours, uh, it will begin the rest of the week. And that will sort of set the tone in terms of what I'm tr going to try to get done for the week in terms of the research. Anyways, uh, that's it. I'm going to say good night and um, awesome thing of the day. The research desk is working the way it's supposed to work. All right. Bye-bye.